The Playboy Club London is hosting the inaugural Premier League Poker Mixed Game Championships. Twelve top players, three different games, one poker extravaganza. From the Playboy Club London, we're bringing you the first ever season of the Party Poker Premier League Mixed Game Championship. Our 12 players are competing in three different types of card games in this unique league format. Group A first took to the table with No Limit Hold'em, and Luke Schwartz gave the verbal big time. Can we get started, man? I'm going to dunk it off, I can tell. If I bust, I've made a huge mistake. I cannot bust to these fish. In Hold'em, I know how to rep everything. Right, yeah. Take it down with the green oh. That's what I'm saying. Whoa. I did not do that. I'm one of the biggest online No Limit winners of all time, yeah? Oh, genius, baby. <laughs> We're telling you, genius, genius, genius. And I'll hold them all the way. No Limit soldier for life. Jennifer Tilly was the first to exit, putting her under pressure in the league. Good luck, everybody. See you tomorrow. James Dempsey, playing his double-up card, took maximum points. Omaha next, and Tony G got off to a flyer. What a start. Just winning every hand. On your bar. But he could only make second, as Pescatori played his double-up card to perfection. How can I miss that? Sweet! She just doesn't let me win one hand. It's not even the river yet. You're already complaining. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have a look at the league standings after the first two games. It's Max Pescatori guaranteeing his seat at the final with 19 points. Dempsey on 16, almost certainly secure. Then it's a dogfight. Tony G with eight, Gene Eddy with seven, plus his double up card. Luke Schwartz on six, and Jennifer Tilly with three points, but still her destiny in her own hands with the double up card to play. Group B have only played their no limit hold'em heat. Always a sweat. Never easy. They're trying to pick on the old guy. I can't believe he pulled kings there. He's just a pigeon. Again, it was the player with the double up card, Andrew Feldman, who took first place. I deserve a better luck on TV. Group B looks like this after one game. Feldman far and away the leader on 16 points. Frankenberger on six, Carpenter on four, Mike Sexton on three, Sorel Mizzy on two, and Tim Oshenko with no points. But Carpenter, Feldman, and Mizzy have all used their double up cards, so the low ones are bang in trouble. The six players in Group B are ready to start their Omaha Heat, and I can tell you that Mike Sexton has decided to use his double up card, which gives him twice as many points for this round. So, Mike, what were your thoughts be behind using it now? Well, my primary thought was I know all these guys are terrific no limit hold'em players and pot limit hold'em players. Hold'em is their game. I'm hoping if they have a weakness, it's going to be pot limit Omaha, so I opted to use my double up card today. Well, good luck, all of you. Thank you so much. So Mike Sexton has decided to play yeah, his double up card. card. Max, that was after field. watching yeah. your performance. He decided it was a smart move for him. Well, yeah, I, I, Mike is really good with uh, all games, and especially in a mix event uh, like this one. I think that is his best chance to play it in this one. I'm joined by Max Pescatori for commentary here. Max, this is actually a game you really like to play, Tournament Pot in Omaha. Uh, so you, you're pretty confident you know of a lot of the strategy here, which people are unfamiliar with. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the experience came from uh, uh, a lot of play online, but also the fact that I really love the game. And uh, when uh, when I was in Vegas and first started playing No Limit, then I decided to switch in a more interesting game, which is this one because you have more thinking, more combinations, and uh, I don't know, I really love it. Now look at the dynamics here. Andrew Feldman, who is the points leader with 16, is raised from the button with, I, I guess, a, a fairly weak hand, and Mizzy, 
who really needs points, has already used his double up card, has just flat called with kings uh, in the big blind. I would expect Sorrel to have uh, an edge against Feldman, but I mean, uh, just by judging from this kind of hand, I mean, this is a hand that the button does Seven not matter. Uh, in Oma, the button matters up to a certain point. The only problem by raising that you always have the edge of start betting, but uh, I mean, at one point when you have so many blinds, 150 big oh. blinds, who cares? You're putting your money with a, you know, horrible hand, I was Re saying. Remember, you have to use two cards from your hand, three from the flop. Mizzy's got a, a flush right now, and Feldman's actually drawing live. He's got two pair. And Check. Check. Uh, I mean, why hasn't Mizzy raised? Is it is it because he's going to get the most value with the second nuts? He has to be beware of the ace of diamond flush, or? Oh, bad card for Sorrel. And, and, and has Sorrel misplayed this here, or is he? Absolutely not. I mean, he does not have the nut flush. He, he does not want to commit too many hands. I mean, look, there is 27,000 in the pot. Uh, Sorrel needs to finish in the top to to actually do something. He cannot afford to get out right away. But he also has edge to play many hands. Now, he is correct by betting, because if he gets raised, he can pass. Uh, a nut flush cannot raise him. So it's actually a correct bet. 12,000 uh, shows that from the very beginning that he knows the game very well. And Feldman, who has uh, fallen, <laughs> he's, he's fallen backwards into the clothes hamper and had a soft landing here. The full house on the river. It's, it's hard though to raise right away. I mean, you can raise if you get re-raised and you have to fold. So you can mini raise, raise probably. 34. I think 34 is actually a good raise. And and the fact that Feldman has the 16 points, he is uh, feels a little more liberal uh, with with getting trapped here. You know, he's not as scared, right? As, as Absolutely. Yeah, I know you fall. It's okay. If he falls, this is a very good you, fall. The, the only reason over. Sorrel would would think about uh, that Andrew yeah. might be bluffing is just the dynamics of. Feldman deciding he could push around the guys who need right points. Right away, yeah, that's true. And, and it is, are those the dynamics we've got here with, with Feldman having two players, Carpenter and Mizzy, on his left, who've already used their double up card. Nothing but the top two spots is good for them. Can he push them around early? Not really, because they know they have to finish first and second. So uh, that's why probably Sorrell played, and he wants to get the most uh, hands played because as you see uh, he's yeah, uh, very knowledgeable of, of the game and we are saying that after one hand but I know him I played with him many times and he probably feels like he has the edge and so he will he will see him a considerable amount of uh, pot uh, and so so the, the guy to push around is Mike Sexton <laughs> right and and because you were in that spot tell us the secret how do you crack Mike Sexton? What should the other six, players six, be doing nine. against Mike Sexton that they did or didn't do against you? In a sit and go, it's really tough to knock him out because he's <laughs> conservative and he's going to be smart. He's going to let you bet. So, you know, it's not something that you're afraid to lose the whole thing, but you're definitely not counting on going out next. So if you're thinking, I'm going to make a spot, I'll wait and Mike Sexton get out. Forget it, you know. <laughs> he's not getting out fifth. He's not getting out fourth. He's probably not getting out third. But so you just have to play your game, and and then hopefully you you can get him on a on a hand, and you know, or maybe someone else is gonna knock him out. All right. Well, we've had Andy Frankenberger raise this early up with the two kings and the ace, and a re-raise by Ben Carpenter on the button. Is it a huge hand, King Queen Jack Ten? Absolutely. Not a good flop. <laughs> is better than King King Ace Four, sort of overall. Not heads up, but much better, much, much better. better because it plays much better. It plays better. And Frankenberger. Now that Ben Carpenter has re-raised, and if he bets the flop, yeah, he's Frankenberger has to think. Well, he could have aces. He could have something else. Can 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 Frankenberger play here? Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, he. I don't know. I mean, uh, he's got to call one oh. time. I, I don't like the bet of 16,000 with small. that kind of plot. Too small? No, I mean, I don't like it because you really miss everything. There is no reason. We're really at the beginning. You think Carpenter can just raise, re-raise their 17K and then just check? Yeah. Give up? Yeah, it's okay. okay to give up every once in a while. There is nothing wrong with it. And you should be doing that more in Omaha than in Hold'em where this... this Absolutely, right. because in Omaha, uh, four cards is hard for everybody to miss. <laughs> we see that... You know, Carpenter miss, and Frankenberger knows Check. that. But now he has to continue to bet Carpenter to actually might have a chance to win the pot. 
and it's going to be tough anyway. Is, is, is so. ben he's drawing that. Yeah, mm. is, is he play? He's playing this like a hold'em hand. Then is that he so? did at least at the beginning, but it's okay. Maybe he wants to impose himself Check. as an aggressive player, and he might pay off later. Uh, and Frankenberger's checked again. Now my guess is he's checked to call almost all bets. Correct. Uh, bets. I mean, right. not even if he would have done pot, he probably would have taken it down. I guess it's 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 definitely reasonable to assume that Carpenter could still have aces here. He could have played aces this way, but it's not likely, is it? He's gonna call for sure here, 100 percent of chances of calling. Uh, though it, it is possible that Frankenberger is is quite inexperienced in Omaha. I mean, I I, I don't really know. Even more that he's gonna just call. Right. He's gonna check call. Check call. He did them, by the way. And he did, and he's won. Got a nice sixty thousand profit, which is not bad. Back for more from the Premier League Poker Mix Game Whoa. Championship with Max Pescatori after the break. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm in second place going in, and I still have my double up cards. So. That's about all I can ask for at this point. Well, every time I play poker, I play with my heart. You know, I'm going to go out there to play the best I can. If I can get a first or a second today, then that will that'll put me in a good position to uh, qualify. I'm going to have to uh, step it up and do really well in the next two heats or I'll, in order to have a chance. So, you know, I'm looking to, uh, to do that and gamble and, you know, try to, try to, like, play for the win in this tournament. This is it. Yeah, I mean, it's a big part of it anyway. Certainly I can't afford to be one of the first two out, but you know, to not have a chance to go through to the final, but uh, I like my chances in Omaha. Welcome back to the first ever Party Poker Premier League Mixed Game Championship. Our 12 players are competing in this unique league format that will see them play heats of No Limit Hold'em, Pot Limit Omaha, and Pot Limit Hold'em. The second half of the field is in action in their Omaha League match. Let's head back to the table. 400k pots in like the first five minutes. When we look at this table, and as far as the double up cards and strategy, we know yeah, right now that both Frankenberger and Yevgeny Timoshenko, they're going to be the guys who have the card uh, for that last heat. And so I guess a lot of eyes are on Sorrel Mizzy and Ben Carpenter because probably, uh, obviously, they're thinking top two spots. But the reality is <sighs> if they get top four spots, there's a lot of scenarios where they can still have a chance. But yeah. if they're out sixth or fifth, uh, the reality is, is almost certainly that they're out out. Right. You know. Right. I mean, there we can see a couple of ways where maybe 12, 13 points could get through, you know, or even 10. But uh, eight points is not is not going to get you through. Six, five, six, five, six, 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 Timoshenko's flopped a set here. Yeah, six, finally someone six. has. We're gonna see some action. And, but. and Carpenter's got top and bottom pair. Is this? I mean, is, does he have any any reason to get involved with this hand, Carpenter? Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well? He feels like he has a good hand. He held bad, and uh, and he gets called. Then it's you oh. know the worst thing that can happen is the five, of course. But uh, you know it's not a hand that is gonna go. Anybody's gonna go broke unless that happens. So that's actually a card that stops the action. Right, it's given Ben the black door flush. Or interestingly, Frankenberger would have hit his trade. He was he was in before. But the now flush. Timoshenko needs to bet, and that's that's, that's the correct thing to do. Timoshenko's betting, and he is going to have to he's going to have to see the river no matter what. Even if even if Carpenter puts the maximum pressure on, you Not think Not necessarily. I mean, uh, you can fold the uh, second side in Omaha, right? Because uh, oh. you're not definitely not committed. So right. if he would have done 128. Uh, or 124, which was the perfect amount. But well, backdoor that's flush bad. just got there. And does Carpenter have a lot of reasons to bet this? No. He'll check, check call. Because or check, check, because check. Uh, you don't have a reason to do it. 100,000 in the pot. Timoshenko might check. Yeah, I got check. It. That's fair. He's going to feel pretty sick. KO. He will feel pretty sick. KO is going to be KO this time. <laughs> that is good. Let's take a look at how you played Pot Limit Omaha. In Omaha, each player receives four cards face down. These are known as hole cards. The action follows the same rules as Hold'em. 
Each player has the option to either call to match the big blind, to raise, or to fold their hand. Once all players have acted, three community cards are dealt face up on the table. These are known as the flop. Another round of betting follows. Players can either check their hand, which means no bet, bet, raise a previous bet, or fold. Once the flop action is complete, another community card is dealt, the turn. Another round of betting follows, and the final community card, the river, is dealt. One more round of betting follows. Players are looking to make the best five card poker hand using their whole cards and the five shared community cards. The difference in Omaha is that each player must use precisely two of their four whole cards together with precisely three of the community cards to make their best hand. A hand can be won either by all other players folding to one player or by players showing down their cards and the best hand taking the pot. As it's pot limit, there is a cap on the betting and you cannot commit your whole stack. Players can only better raise an amount equal to or less than the size of the current pot. Not like what it is that you would like. Definitely 10 It's only been uh, uh, 11 hands. Tim Oshenko has well, lost about 50K max and Frankenberger's on top. It's a little ridiculous. What's the starting ball? It, it actually, it's funny. Tim Oshenko, uh, I, I think yeah, one of the craziest yeah. hands I ever saw him play, if probably he's ever played on television, is in the last Premier League when he uh, he turned uh, he turned the top two pair into a bluff and got oh, wow. uh, got Roland the Wolf off bottom set. Six, five, nine, six, five, plus. For you to think he's profitable, you'd probably think, like, yeah, two K. Just give me two K. I'll, yeah. I'll have like a one percent ROI. Meanwhile, Mike Sexton raised it up. There you go. And this is the kind of hand Mike Sexton is going to raise it up with. Nothing wrong with that. I love the aces two pair because it can be deceiving by by ha flopping the other side. I guess it, you know Mike. Mike is the kind of player. What obviously when he starts re-raising, you know he's got the aces. But I think these guys will just kind of put him on the aces automatically whenever he just whenever he comes in. No, no, no. They know he can do all kinds of tricks. I think it's a little bit too much of that. But but I mean. Here is a spot that he could have betted just because he has the A-side flush draw too. Uh, so particularly he could have betted, but you know the pot is only 11. He doesn't want to lose any chips. He has the the concept of the double up card and still ahead. But uh, he's gonna he's gonna keep pot small um, because it's it's smart too for the double up card. You're saying? Yes, yeah. yeah, it's. And the question is. Uh, should Carpenter be betting this river? Um, I think it'll probably get through, but should he be betting the river? I know if he bets it, Mike might call just like I did with the King King 6-6 six, six because of the two blockers. So it's really hard to put him on a bet with 6-7. Ah, and because he can't have 6-7, he's not value betting two pairs. Yeah, but then saying. there was no 5-4 on the flop that you can even put him on that. So you have a 5-3 comes at 4, then he has to have perfectly 6-7. He has to be afraid of aces with a deuce. Wow, Mike's capable of calling this? Yes, it's a correct call. That's he's raised it. I mean, he's raised it. He raised it! Why? Mike raised him! Ah, because of the two sevens, that's true. He, he's trying to, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, could, he can say I'm going to let down uh, two pair, but... I don't think he would have had two pair anyway, Carpet. I think it's a, it's a good raise. It's okay. So it's a good raise. You like the call better, but it's a good raise. Right, right. I mean, because two pair there is harder for them to bet because of the ace deuce mainly. Yeah. Because if you have aces, if you put someone on aces, you can have aces. So, but it's a good play no matter what by Mike. He didn't get scared and he, you know, take down this pot and it's huge for him to go to probably 330, something like that, 328. That's Sexton. He's going to be tough. He is going to be tough. And Carpenter, and Carpenter is the short stack, but there's not much in it. Oh, 240 is okay. I'm, I'm going for it. Yeah. Still, you cannot afford to lose too much because then you'll be like obligated not to bluff anymore and try to overbet every time you have something. So, I mean, we are at the first level. Blinds are, this is the last hand of the first level. Blinds are going to. Hand 21. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so okay. Up. And so far, it's been a pretty tight game, would you say? I mean, it's it is. They're actually testing each other. They're like in a six, six 
Frankenberger there, to me that was a hand he might have, he played almost an identical hand in that position earlier. And I think he's just decided, you know, this Feld bit is on my tail. I'm going to have to tighten up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this is a very bad hand, by the way. It's, nine, uh, nine, seven, sixes. No, no, this one, this one, uh, oh, Feldman. King 7, uh, Jack Deuce. Jack Deuce, although he's double suited and although he has position, well, I guess compared to the one that he raised at the beginning, it's a monster, <laughs> but, but it's not a very good hand, man. And These I like to actually limp. Mm -hmm. If you have position, because you know, if he gets re-raised, then he doesn't know what to do. And uh, He's got uh, Mizzy. And Timoshenko in in the blinds. Wow, though, what a flop. <laughs> You're going to start thinking different about these King Jack I love this, and I said it right away. <laughs> no, it's almost a perfect flop, and it's still got some, some danger. It's top two pair, but the flush draw is, is very weak, isn't it? Yes. but And and what is... Uh, Mizzy is just leading That's out here from the small awesome. blind. He's got no backdoor draws to speak of. Uh, forget about what I said about Mitzi being good. Do you think this is a, a, is a, is a fairly fairly poor play? It's a, is it a bluff? I, I don't understand it, it. Because he has no, if he has backdoor draws, it's okay, the sort of thing, or? Yeah, but there is too much out there. That's yeah. the thing. There is straights out there against two players. You can do this against one player to intimidate him, but, but here there is two players. It was a small bet, but Feldman all over it raised. Yeah, he right raised, away. and he took it down. Uh, put down on another advice. Top pair in this game is not very good. <laughs> Especially if there is a straight draw and flush draw out there. Doesn't matter what your kicker is, really. And you don't have any other two. <laughs> Do you think this leaderboard is a f fair description of what's happened the first level, Max? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, maybe it's a little bit too rewarding to Frankenberger, the one, the big hand, but, but uh, you know, for the rest, I think it's pretty fair, and uh, Feldman deserved the cheap lead. And for Sexton, the one using the double up card, he will be delighted with the way things are going so far, just where he expected to be. For Mizzy and Carpenter, who are who are fourth and sixth right now, I know they're they still have fine chips, but uh, the hand should be up uh, in this. Uh, all right, but for so uh, it's two thousand four thousand now. Yeah, so the blinds two thousand four thousand. Whatever, I want first or last. <laughs> Fortunately for Carpenter, he is in a spot where if he goes out first or second, it's game over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it really is. There was a phrase of a movie that kept saying, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> Must be Schwarzenegger. No, no. <laughs> was it Rounders? If it's not, if it's not Schwarzenegger yeah, or Rounders, I haven't seen it. Uh, Carpenter's raised this, and Mike Sexton called. Uh, it's, it's notable because Mike Sexton obviously hasn't called many hands. Is right. this is this a premium hand, small blind? That is a very fine hand, and Frankenberg is also a very fine hand. A very fine hand. <laughs> it's like we're grading <laughs> coins or something. Yeah. <laughs> fine, very fine, and excellent. <laughs> A carpenter would check, of course. Ooh, what a card for carpenter! Set for carpenter, but card for a everybody. Huge draw for Sexton. Yeah, he's got the complete wrap, and and, and is Frankenberger thinking that uh, he's got outs with the flush draw? Yeah, what a hand! If he doesn't create action here, that means we're gonna have like a 12-hour table. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, it looks like Frankenberger's leading out. Now, should carpenter be raising? Yes. For sure. Yes. For several reasons. Okay. Now, let's say he decides to call. Now, he gives all kinds of draws to everybody. Right. But if you raise, then only kings or nines will re-raise it, right? Right. Because nobody's going to have the, the... So if he gets called, he knows that he's good right now. Correct. Which is important for him to, to assert, sort of. Correct. And he's gotten Sexton off the draw, which is also... It turns Not out to be too quite bad at all because right. I mean he had half a deck. So. And how should Frankenberger be thinking about his yeah. flush draw? He That's just probably he yeah. passes because it was more of a stealing bet because it's of course he cannot think that 
he checked behind and he, he, he hit the eight. So it was okay played by everybody. I think everybody played it quite well. We'll be back with more action from the Playboy Club in London as the Party Poker Premier League Mixed Game Championship continues after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Premier League Mixed Game Championship from the Playboy Club in Mayfair. We'll be finding out who is the ultimate all-around poker player as our players battle it out in three different card games. Right now, it's the Omaha match for Group B. Let's get back to the table. I'm in the box with Max Pescatori watching the Omaha. Are you going to leave, like, just commentating and go play after uh, this is over? <laughs> Not Omaha. <laughs> and what? I think what am you I wasting get, you all my get, knowledge to no, no, I help you out? I, I've got the itch now of watching this. <laughs> I think a lot of people who are watching do. It's, it's, a, it's a really exciting game when you start watching it. Yeah, there will be a race for sure here. I love those four hands, by the way. The, the ace queen, the ace picture, picture four or five when the ace is suited. Absolutely, yeah. Any yeah. any card except for the f the five can be any card, but it's, if it's suited with that, it's, I really like it. Heads up, it's a beautiful hand. Now this is interesting, I, I guess, because Saxon has what they call the blockers to the straight. Not right? only he also has a flash, so he should bet, and he will. And, and how should Timoshenko be thinking about this hand? Difficult, difficult. Very difficult hand, and he's probably going to muck. He's just got the king to the nuts. He's yeah. got a backdoor sh uh, sh flush draw. Top pair, but it's worth nothing. Is The fact oh. that it's blind on blind, does his top pair go up in value at all? No. Yeah, a little bit, but, but <laughs> not on that. Flat. Because, I mean, what are you trying to make? Two pairs? I don't know. If you make two pair, <laughs> He's got the best hand The right other one is going to make a straight 90% of the time. <laughs> if you make a flush, right, he made two pair. Good job. <laughs> so is, is he in a bit of trouble right now, Timoshenko, do you think? It depends how, how much he bets. Bet it's a good bus. Half a size, <laughs> and so just to make Timoshenko thinking about it. That's why you don't call with top pair. And is Timoshenko's problem here? Is he thinking, look, if I call here, I have to be prepared to call a river. If my ace-queen's good, I have to be prepared to call a river bed, or is that not what he should be thinking now? He calls, so that, no, that it doesn't matter. He might not call the river if Mike bets another 60, but Mike might be smart enough to bet another 25, which would get him in trouble. He does not have to bet much to get a call. This is bet's fifty. Five bet fifty thousand. He sure yeah. did. It would be right if Mike has. Of a course, it's easy for us, but I think it would be a bad call. You checked, and that's actually a good fall. So you don't think there were many bluffs there from Mike? You don't. You, you thought it was kind of unlikely. A three-barrel bluff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, Mike. I'm sure he, he's right. capable. No, it's a good ruling, point. If he's if he's got the dry king, he's got a he's got a jack very often, doesn't he? That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, you you have a king, then you also might have a jack. So, so you don't need two, three barrels. That's why I would have liked better a 25k bet because you know 100 percent of the time, your opponent does not have a flush. So 25, then he's forced to call you because it's too humiliating to pass for <laughs> one fifth of the pot. <laughs> I have to do that more often. Just <laughs> one sixth on the river with position and the nuts maybe. <laughs> so someone repops it. I'm gonna do that in the final for you. I, I, I You'll be like, hey, yeah, there was a, there's a name. I'm trying to remember. There's a name for that. And I can't remember. Uh, but uh, for Mike Sexton, obviously a great spot. He's now very close to the chip lead. Loves that perfect. pot, yeah, and uh, everything's going according to plan. 
for Timoshenko. Um, you know, if he looks at that pot in the context of the fact that he got a zero last time, he's, uh, is it all or nothing for him right now? Well, from the last 10, it wasn't the right, the best play that he could make. So we'll see if he kind of loses his uh, cool. Frankenberger splashes the pot like <laughs> there is no tomorrow. And he is another nice hand. But we, we haven't seen a bunch of hands this nice yet. I think this is everybody's kind of got something. And a couple have hit this flop. Mitzi. Mitzi for sure with the royal flush draw. Oh, sorry, the king high flush draw. Feldman's got a straight flush draw. Seat one bet, 26,000. Overall, look at that. Mizzy just tossed the king. I mean, is this a good bet from Feldman in that he's got Miz, guys like Mizzy to lay down their hand and that sort of thing? Or it seemed yeah. like a very yeah. ambitious bet. It's a very strange a bet. I mean, yep. he could have gone either way. If he checks, Mitzi will bet it. Oh, wow. I guess you to the show. They didn't get back on. That's all I have to do, right? I bet anyone who's Players still feeling their way into oh, no, this. No. Omaha they heat do of the party though. poker you know? Premier League poker so. mixed game Who's championship. Poker stars. Were they? Poker stars, I'm sure. Well, they, and they didn't sponsor it. They that's a bad it. hand uh, for the short stack. Yeah, they were, they were like, Timoshenko will muck it. Seat four pass, seat five. Was it a Feldman and Frankenberger showing the Was way so far? Or they paid for the airtime? I don't know what the. <clears throat> Andrew's got that. Don Johnson thing going on. Folded around to the blinds now. These two are quickly developing a relationship. And there's a check dark as well. So what's, uh, what's in nice. America right now then? I'm, I'm sure Ben Carpenter has heard a lot more about Sorel Mizzy than vice versa to this stage. Only show. Only legal show. It's a bet and call, small blind to big blind, flush draw for Carpenter, two-way straight for Sorrell. And he's ahead with the two jacks. We just have all these flops where someone is something, someone is nothing completely or almost. This is an interesting hand because Carpenter check called the flop, and now Mizzy is... Betting again? Yeah, this... He, he, this it's kind of, I guess it's, it's kind of turned into a bluff, sort of. He's got the best hand, is it, though? But. Yeah, there is not much in the pot. And figure I'm going to... That's the other thing. In pot limits, sometimes you think, if someone has a really good hand, he has to raise it. If not, he's not building enough pot to actually put it later on. So. Now, the it's question the is, card. doesn't Mizzy have to... He can pot here because he knows that the other one should not have Jack Queen. Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two. Yeah, I think they kind he's of disappointing me. He's they're they're sort of leveling each other. Mizzy wants to bet him out. Has it been the first one? That I looks remember. like he wants Carpenter to think that this yeah, is the amount he'd yeah, bet yeah. for value, in a sense, right? Yeah, but I mean, there is nothing hidden about that straight. Right. It was king ten. If you have queen jack, you can clearly bet bet, and then when you get there, you can actually do pot. And it's not like your opponent is going to say, oh, he doesn't have it. It was right there. What he was he what was he betting for? So do you think Carpenter should be calling yeah, this two pair? I don't know. I mean, it's too easy to say. <laughs> he's doing the, he's trying to get a read. He's called it. He got it right. That's exactly what he expected. Fairly amazing, really. I'm trying to figure if you'd value the ice king. So trying to... Yeah, I would. I bet. Yeah, I'd value yeah. anything. Ace, seven, ace, ten, ace, king. <laughs> but I agree with him. <laughs> I don't think he's joking. No, I don't either. He's Sorrell said, you might have won the pop then, but it was a bad call. That's what he was saying. <laughs> For a long time, it's been like that. We're back after the break with more from the Premier League Mixed Game Championship.
Welcome back to the Party Poker Premier League Mixed Game Championship. Five left around the table now as we head back into the Cottontail Lounge for all the action. Let's not tick talk about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're trying to get that change. Where you for Ben Carpenter, obviously, heard, every I've chip counts that right now. Be, He's um, changing soon. scrapping away. But I don't think it will happen. I think we're safe. For a long time. We'll all be off to Malta. I can't imagine the U.S. adapting your model. That's How many total like, hands yeah. we're playing? <laughs> Zero chance. Right. In, in Group A, in the Group A Omaha? I think it was uh, around 124 or so. Oh, okay, cool. Which, which is the, I think it was 1530 level, wasn't it? Yeah, this one is going to finish definitely earlier. We we dragged along forever. For the joy of everybody. It's, <laughs> it's a nice, it was a nice, uh, very strategic table. It, it was very tactical and, and obviously, you know, as the heats as we progress, and especially in the last pot limit hold'em heat, which is going to be completely tactical, it could easily go down to the wire, uh, just depending on who needs what to happen. Here we've got a situation, Max. Uh, Frankenberger's raised it with a suited ace, and all suits are now covered, basically. Wow. Uh, especially if somebody sh turns up with the ace of diamonds suited. Sure, we're going to see three diamonds on the flop because of that. Yeah. that all suits covered. Though. Ooh, but that's a pair. He always stops the action, and especially Frankenberg has the eight and a flush jump. But it's a pretty big flop for Frankenberger. He's got the. This is this is definitely. He should be betting, right? Yeah, absolutely. He raised, yeah. You have a flush draw, you bad. And this pot should be over. But let's remember, he checked the A7 in, in Hold'em two times. <laughs> <laughs> if he goes in the final, I'm going to call him hey, A7. What's going on? Uh, well, it's a good way, because he was a little bit upset with the, the critique that some people made about it. He, 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 he got defensive? He was, yeah, he's sticking to his guns. <laughs> he really Lol. is. He's sticking to his gun. There is nothing wrong to admit you're wrong. <laughs> Every once in a while, we all make stinkers, right? Even the best Absolutely. players. Absolutely. Even the best of us. I made a bad comment in the hand, in one of the hands. Uh, yes, yeah, so I admitted right after. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, it's okay to do it. Ben Carpenter's raised this. Uh, it's uh, wow. 15 up to 34. It's a bold play, I guess, in his mind. He said, look, Frankenberger raised pre-flop. He, he doesn't have the eight here. Is, That's a good point. That's is, actually a good play strategic-wise. He's unlucky. But now that, that he's he gotten called, is he done? Is he is he very, very done? Uh, he might be done, but the problem is that... Oh, wow, that's a killer. That's a killer for her Carpenter because, of course, he is drawing that now. I mean, I mean, Frankenberger's thinking to himself, you know, could this guy have kings full? Could he have kings full? Would he ever have raised kings full on the flop? Um, Frankenberger was... You know, Surely that's a bad card because now you say, okay, he, you know, he might have didn't have ace. He's, I have an ace, so I have a flush draw, but then he bet. What did he call me with? Two queens? It's impossible. So why is he calling me? I have a flush draw. So Carpenter really should shut it down He's here. done, yeah, he's done. Right. If he knows anything, if you think about reason about the hand he's done and he, he correctly checked by the way he, he has a little bit of showdown value on top of it let's see if frank kemberger is gonna actually bet out or maybe he's gonna try to pick up a bluff so interesting on the flop i mean if you don't know a lot about Omaha, I guess if you're in Frankenberger's shoes, you're not really sure when you're calling the raise on the flop. If you're, are you trapping or are you worried about being beat? Right? It's yeah. a weird spot, isn't yeah. it? And really, sometimes you you have no chance of knowing. You just have to wait. <laughs> because he but got. But the ace surely give you a help. Right. Anyway, Andy's going to go for a value bet. This, I'm, I'm guessing this hand is just completely over. Yeah, it's over. Certainly, Carpenter's not going to get himself knocked out in this spot. No, but it... I, I didn't mind how he played so far, so I think he's going to be... He's good enough to... <laughs> oh, no! 
He's pushed them in! Ouch! He, he's pushed them in! And now this is... Yeah, I pot it. Or call. Yeah, seat two's gone all in. Six, six, and Frankenberger hasn't even Good hesitated. Wow, now, what a bad, I bad mean, hand. I don't know what the proper terminology is there. I, call or what. what? What? What happened there? I mean, did, what did, Car, did Carpenter know what he was trying to get Frankenberger yeah, exactly. off of Max? Just, just I, I think no, he he felt that. Do you think he thought Car Frankenberger was bluffing? What was he trying to get Frankenberger to lay oh. down? Wow, I don't know because I mean, a, a naked, naked yeah. eight. A naked eight. I thought you had King yeah. eight and, like and he would have probably got King it eight, he's saying. He gets aces, ace eight. And uh, Ben Carpenter is out, and and then pretty much this is uh, massive. He he's kind of. It's not for sure yet, but there is every chance that he is out completely of uh, of this yeah. tournament. First off the table is Ben, and uh, it just really didn't go your way here today, did it? No, I mean, um, I was trying to make a few moves early on. I obviously needed a first or a second, so I was willing to get it in, like, 50% for sure. I just wanted all the chips, you know, to get a first place, and ended up making a move against a... I shouldn't have done it. He's, like, an experienced Omaha player, and I've, I figured he had an eight or, a, like, a low house, and I can rep, like, kings and possibly aces there, but... He like even with a eight, which is a strong hand, it's definitely not the nuts and the the way he snapped all in. It just shows like I wouldn't have even got him off like a small house sort of thing. So you know, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have done it. Blinds will be three and six thousand. Mizzy and Timoshenko still both over thirty big blinds. I noticed you didn't really hit the panic button until you had about nine or eight. I'm so curious to watch the show to see my my aggression level and what, the hands that I played. But but no, I I never panicked. Wow, look at Mizzy's hand. This is that is a beautiful hand. And I guess one of the things about Omaha is as beautiful as a hand gets, it's still never as, as powerful as a hand could be before the flop and hold them. Right? Wow, let's look at this one. So This is a nice pop. Do you see Timoshenko re-raising here? No, that's not such a great hand. Do you, want, I, I, you play it all the time, but you don't need to re-raise it. Absolutely. You have position, what do you care? You have the button. So you just call and you play in position, and it's beautiful. Frankenberger with a chance in the big blind. It's not... not Frankenberger much. always have... So, <laughs> decent hand that nobody else has. <laughs> it's a three card hand. So, you like it's a three card straight. It's and a the three other card, card hand. Yes. It's not a very good hand. But he is a scary you're in the guy. big blind and you have to put half, so it's okay. We're going to have some action, I believe. We should have some action. Top two for Mitzi and uh, a gut shot. And Timoshenko has. A flush draw and uh, it's it's but not the nut flush. It's draw. not the nut flush draw, but when there's an ace of hearts out there, isn't it less likely that someone has the king high flush draw than the ace? I, I mean, I don't Absolutely. know. He, he has to play this, doesn't he? Absolutely, because you always expect someone, if they play correctly, to have the ace high flush draw, but you don't you don't expect people to play the king high flush draw. So it's, I think it will come. The only problem that if you make a queen, then if he has king ten, you're done. But that's the only th scare thing, but eh, it's okay. But you have position. That's the thing. You have position against. Looks like he's thinking of raising. And I mean, is there no, any no, no, benefit no. towards Calls. it? Safe ball call. Because when Mizzy comes and fires at this flop, he has to have something. Well, I know, so he doesn't have that much, that many chips. It's perfect to put one seventh of your stack inside and and look at the next card and and Mitz is under pressure, so. That ah, there it is. Great card for Timoshenko. And now Mitzi, let's see if he makes a mistake. If he pots, yes. Why would that be, be in trouble? Why would that be a mistake? How can he represent the king high flush draw? Check. Or does he does he need to? He doesn't, but it would be a mistake because I don't think Timoshenko will put him on that. He will probably bet now. In the same year, he not only won the twenty-five thousand event at the Bellagio, but also the largest uh, online buy-in tournament. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, he's, uh... That's 39 and plus. 
Could have done that from any point from like one second to three minutes and the result would have been the same. <laughs> Sorrell said it didn't matter if you were doing that one so second sick. or three minutes oh, from the time I checked. I was still passing. It's quite funny. <clears throat> and that's a quite a good player, not even getting the hitch of calling with Ace Jack. He knew exactly <laughs> where his opponent was. <laughs> he said it didn't Very unlucky so far, Sorrell, but playing as best as you can. Be very clock happy. That's just my rule of thumb, <laughs> regardless of what happens. I mean, Feldman's <laughs> definitely slowed down, right? He's he Which started, is, yeah. Yeah, well, he's smart. Yeah, I mean, it's a way to do that. By doing that, you almost are guaranteed you're gonna go another spot. And I, I feel like the players are kind of, if you if you if you think about Mike, Frankenberger, and Feldman, they would all. They all would be quite happy to see Sorrell, obviously, Sorrell and Yevgeny bust in the next two spots. Right now, Sorrell and Yevgeny, they've got short stacks. They're going to have to make something happen. Set for raised, 14,000. Yeah, Timoshenko raised with a very legitimate hand. Ace King 10 6 with the ace suited. Ooh. And is this, I was going to say, is this a spot now? I, I saw you limp a lot with, uh, not limp, but just call raises with aces. Mike could have gone either way. Wh wh why the decision just to flat with the aces? Uh, here, it, it's almost questionable because, okay, the reason that you limp with aces is because if someone has the great idea to isolate or try to push Timoshenko around, then you have aces, nobody knows. Now you can go on a three or four way all in, three way all in with the, with the aces. 14 was good enough for me to pot behind, especially because Timoshenko has only 190. But you do put yourself at risk to lose, and it's not what my Sexton is trying to do. He's trying to chip in his way. Timoshenko is afraid of him. So I like either way, if he would have raised or if he would have just uh, call like he did, so right. it's Mike, good either way. It's just a, a strategy. Check, check. Um, well, it's not a bad it. card for Mike. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not a bad card at all for Mike. Quite helpful. Give him a little bit more of a. I mean, theoretically, it didn't change anything, you know, unless Timoshenko had the other two pairs of the other pair of aces. But, but it gives you confidence. <laughs> right, and it gives you the. I don't know why, just, just give it a house. little bit of extra <laughs> confidence that you have three sevens. Yeah. You'll check call, of course, you're not going to go crazy. Uh, well, Tim Mashenko uh, seems to get himself in pickle. Uh, my feeling, Max, is that Tim Mashenko would have always bet three jacks on the flop. Do you agree? Um, and so that this doesn't make a lot of sense? or. It's okay, though, to, to, to put in uh, a, a bet because you don't put Mike on on aces, and so it's hard for putting put Mike on jacks, just like we say before. Uh, you know, the guy behind that checks the three of a kind is generally not likely. So I, I like Timoshenko bet, but now he has to give up. Mike's pretty confident that he's pretty confident, even better. I bet this small, very, very small. Not that it matters, Timoshenko's got nothing. We saw before it didn't. <laughs> Carpenter went for a check raise. He did. Timoshenko is being owned. <laughs> well, both him and Sorrell have gotten kind of eaten up. And. No, it's, it's, it's not fun. They're going to have to make something happen. Over to Kara Scott now. Who's catching up with Mike Sexton? We're a few levels in, so describe for me the situation for you at the table so far. Well, I feel pretty good. I'm the only one using the double-up chip for this tournament, but I'm very confident in my Omaha play and feel good about it. And, you know, I was prepared for a long heat, so to speak, and, you know, I knew it was going to be long and slow. So, you know, things are going along fine so far. We've only lost one player so far, and uh, the blinds are going up. So it does create kind of an interesting dynamic in terms of chip stacks. Talk to us about yours. Well, I think I'm okay. I don't even know what I got. At least average, a little above average. There's a couple shorter stacks, much shorter. So I'm happy with the things that are going so far. I feel like I played well so far, and uh, hopefully it keeps going.
blinds going up to five and ten thousand. Still five players in. Mizzy and Timoshenko, though, when these blinds are 16 and 17 blinds respectively, and they have to be very, very careful about uh, getting knocked out. Next time, we'll see who takes down maximum points in Group B's Omaha match here at the Premier League Mixed Game Championship. It's hard to connect in poker. No, when you have four cards. I'm either going to look like an absolute genius or the biggest donk. You look good or he'll look good, one or the other. I just hope I look like the genius. Stop and go, man. That is the trashiest and I've played all day. I can't imagine you could find a trashier one than that. How do you like your spot, Andy? I'm still crushing it.